Okay, um, welcome back to this uh, third session today. Um, our session is called the flipped classroom. Um, just a couple of things first, if there aren't any new people who've just, just arrived. Um, I'm hosting this hour. I'll be keeping time. I'll be looking at the chat. If there are any questions, please put them in the chat or, or I'll give you the opportunity to, to ask the questions out loud at the end of this session. I'd like to go through, I'd like to see both presentations first and then we'll have a conversation at the end. Um, our session is called the flipped classroom. I suppose it's, it, it's a concept that was invented, I suppose, to focus on blended learning, active learning, student engagement, but of course in Corona times this is sort of, we've taken this to new heights, I suppose. What we're going to see today is we're going to see one sort of fresh, Corona fresh approach to the flipped classroom and one more established project that has sort of really come into its own during um, pandemic times. We're meeting two teams. The first project is called Creative Exercises for Students to Collaborate Better and to Break Out of the Corona Video Conferencing Overkill with Tom Gerber from Zurich University of the Arts. And the second project we're going to see is how to adapt practical teaching to an online environment, which is really interesting. This is with Tommy Sponheden and Carl Hedin. And they're all here, all three. And I'm going to hand over to you first, Tom. Take it away. Thank you very much, uh, Eli. I have to excuse myself. The internet here is sort of not working splendidly today. So um, please point this out to me if things get a bit shaky. And the title was actually meant ironic because uh, I came up with the idea during the complete overkill. And COVID obviously hit, hit us all. Um, it hit me especially because um, I do a summer school um, uh, which is transdisciplinary and transcultural. Uh, and the idea is that students from all over the world meet, they have a three week course all different fields of art and they create an exhibition and they put it on stage. So we were faced as many of you with the question, do we cancel that course or not? And uh, of course we didn't cancel it. And I just wanna show you uh, just a very uh, short presentation on how we managed the, that the student could get to know each other on a personal level. So this is just one simple idea we had and I'm curious about your feedback. And I'm showing some video, that's why I prepared um, a presentation. Um, can you see this? Um, hang on. Can you still hear me? Can hear you. Lovely. And you can see my screen. I can see your screen relatively small, but other people might be able to see it in full view. Yeah, for me, it's a uh, full view. Okay, okay, excellent. Okay, so Eli, just get closer to the screen then. Yes. Okay, so this was our problem. Like for the second year, we do this uh, collaboration, which is basically a collaboration between Zurich University of the Arts, uh, UIL, and a lot of uh, art schools from Southeast Asia. Our problem was, how can we teach a transdisciplinary, transcultural, three-week summer school online? Um, for us, the goal is uh, that students from different artistic fields get to know each other, work together, and create an exhibition in a very, very short time. And now, this year, how do we do this without the students ever meeting in real life? This is a picture you see from last year before COVID. Uh, you can sort of see the groove that we had. So the challenges, challenges for us were, um, we need to collaborate together creatively in teams uh, over the internet. The students need to form groups themselves. We, we don't believe in forming the groups by the teachers, but we want an organic group forming process. 
And the students, of course, need to trust each other because in such a short time frame, um, you need to work together, you need to feel, uh, feel good in a group. Also, we mixed bachelor and master students. So as you all know, there are certain hierarchies that come into play. Um, and also we were not uh, able to see what happens in the group if they were in breakout rooms. So these were our challenges. And we thought a lot about how do students present each other when they don't know each other. And, and one sort of established system is Pecha Kucha. Most of you will know this. This is um, a system. You show 20 images, 20 seconds each, and this should actually give the other students an idea about yourself. This is what we normally did. Here is an example how a Pecha Kucha slide can look from one student. So you present yourself, you maybe present your artwork, you put some pictures together. Probably most of you have, have seen this. The, this is another Pecha Kucha from another student who is studying at UIL. This is basically like, like an advanced PowerPoint. And we knew that this would not be enough for the students to trust each other. So the downsides of this is that you can give sort of glimpses into the artistic work, but it's in, into the artistic work, but it's always superficial. Um, it's also very difficult to show your personality. There's an aspect of self-presentation that is similar to, to social media. You, you, you present yourself in, in the most uh, perfect way. And it's also impossible to show ambivalence, to show silence. Like I do a presentation now, I'm totally aware of the irony, and I speak in a louder voice so you can hear me well. Um, the PowerPoint problem of ADD, attention deficit disorder, too many slides, too many words, at some point you just forget the presentation uh, that you had. And also what's the story? It's, it's no use just presenting bullet points, you always need to have a story. So the idea that we had, and this is actually not my idea, but a colleague of mine who was a co-teacher, who was a journalist, and he had the idea, as we call it, of flash fictions. So these are 120 word, two minute happenings that people create. They write 120 words. They go to a specific site that they love, that has something to do with their text, and they read and present the words that they have written to the group. We thought that this would be a good idea because it allows the people to present their thoughts and feelings through words and even through films. It's important that this artistic work was independent from the big goal of the course. So we were, our course is called Hacking Global Pop Icons. This year we were hacking Greta Thunberg, but the flash fiction exercise was completely free. You could do whatever you want. With this site-specific aspect, we actually forced the students to get away from their Zoom environment. We've all seen each other, the upper bodies, we've seen the backgrounds for weeks, and we forced the students to go out in, in different places. And also we made this a daily ritual. Every day that we did the online teaching course, before we even said something, we started with two or three of these flash fictions. And as I said, it's very short, it's 120 words. You can write this in five minutes and you can present it in two minutes. Now, I would like to uh, present you an example. I have three examples. They're about one and a half minute each. Um, I asked the students if, if, if it's okay to show this and we'll just have to look, we'll just have a look at the first flash fiction. The hell in the distance is burning again. No one pays it any mind. No one ever has. My mother tells me to close the window and get back to homework. The exams are nearing. Before I do, I hear a child wailing, sitting almost naked on the street outside, crying louder than the tumult of cars and horns traveling up in the thick gray mist to my window. It needs food. The last time it ate, was when a man generously passed it the leftovers of a cake he didn't like. Before I close the window, I see my neighbor trying out new bangles and earrings in front of a mirror. 
She chose marriage because a degree didn't always promise shelter. As I leant out to pull in the window, the security guard smiled at me from his gate. My mother has told me never to smile back. It only encourages them. The electric lights flicker on the street and there is smoke rising from a kitchen window. And far away, you can also hear peacocks. But the hill in the distance will keep burning. It, too, must learn to fend for itself. Were you able to hear the audio of the clip? Yes. Yes, perfectly. Good. So I'm not going to talk about this clip because I want to show you two short other clips so you can all get a sort of overview on how different the flash fictions were. This is um, the second flash fiction. Hello. Here you see us in the court. Hello. Hi, Marta. Is it OK if I do it now? Because it's kind of boiling here as well. It's perfect. OK. So. Uh, now hang on. You're gone. You're gone again. Hang on. Um, now you're back. So, I need to cut my hair. Do you ever feel the need to cut your hair? I need to cut my hair because it doesn't belong to me anymore. It's been capitalized and sexualized. I need to cut my hair because I don't belong to it anymore. I've grown and it has blossomed, but it's pulling me back. It gets stuck between door handles and railings. It gets twisted by other fingers. I need to cut my hair. Do you ever feel the need to cut your hair? That was the second one. And here is the last one. Okay, so I'm, I'm interrupting here because we are running out of time. But uh, the funny thing was that this worked really well. And um, I just want to present some of our findings. This is not a, a conclusive list. What we found out is that if we see each other outside of the Zoom environment, in the outside world, cars are passing by, it's, it's dynamic. This helps a lot for the students to get an image of, of the other student. It's, it's like real life is happening again, and we're not just in our, in our living rooms. We also get a feeling for the person's social surroundings, which is in the transcultural course, quite relevant. Um, and it's also quite a contrary to the Zoom setting where, where your, your view uh, on where the person actually lives is quite limited. Something that struck me personally is we see different body parts. We see legs, we see hands, stuff that we normally don't see in the Zoom meetings. And what we also found out that the students use their voice different than in a Zoom meeting. It can be softer, it can be more dynamic. And unlike Pecha Kucha or PowerPoints, uh, each student can have a hugely individual approach. So the other students can really have a better idea what, motivate this, what motivates a student. And the last thing that I want to point out is it takes courage. Most of these people have maybe never uh, uh, written a text. Most of them have never performed in, fr in front of a camera. And because it's so personal, it takes maybe a bit more courage than to talk in Zoom. And that was quite rewarding because everybody had to do it. 
Um, sorry, my last slide. I just collected some feedback from the three students that you just saw the examples. I asked them uh, a set of questions and there's just some stuff that I wanna show you. The students said, this was a very personal exercise and I could actually get a glimpse into the artistic practice of other students. Everybody was quite nervous, as I said, because they were mostly behind the camera and it was actually liberating to be able to do something like this and present it to the group. A lot of students said that this exercise helped them uh, to tell the others where they really come from. And it, it just gave them a, a kind of a, a bigger view into the, into the personal world, also because of the locations that the people chose, which were quite, quite personal. And everybody actually said that they could actually present a personal creation instead of just talking about it or presenting still images. And the last thing I wanna point out, as you saw in the second video, there were a lot of mistakes. The internet was not working. Um, it's something you can do very quickly. It only takes 10, 15 minutes to write and 15 minutes to perform. It's like a sketch. And sometimes, as we all know, uh, the sketch might be even more interesting than the final artwork. That was it. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you, Tom. Um, I'm just thinking, actually, there was one of these little films you showed. You had to uh, interrupt it. You, you cut it off. And I was just wondering whether... Is it, how long is it? I'm asking because we've got a little bit more time than we actually did, thought we would have. Do you want to show the whole little film? Of course, you mean the, the, the handwritten letter? Yes, yes, why not? Absolutely. <laughs> how long is it? <laughs> like three minutes? Yes, but you know? why not? Let's three do that. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, hang on. Is that okay for everybody? Yes, thank you. Sorry, I ha don't have the full movie here, I must say. I'm really sorry. That's fine. Thank you very much, Tom. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to hand over to HDK Varland, uh, University of Gothenburg, Sweden. Um, Tommy and Carl, please go ahead. Thank you, Eli. And thanks, Tom. That was really interesting. I will definitely yes, take some you. away from that. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. 
Um, can you see this? Yes, we can yes. see. Great. Um, so we want to talk about uh, how to adapt practical teaching to an online environment. And um, um, we're going to use an um, uh, example from a course that distance course that is totally on distance uh, online uh, course in independent filmmaking and um, just hold on for a sec because I have this uh, zoom tool in the way of my uh, uh, keynote um, and this is actually a course that we uh, introduced before uh, COVID and the experience from that helped us a lot to uh, change from the campus teaching to to online teaching overnight. So um, 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 uh, yeah. So the like the core of this course is um, that it has a very cl clearly defined structure of the elements uh, of the course. Uh, we also use uh, the flipped classroom and uh, it's uh, practice self-driven research uh, from the student's point of view. And uh, we admit 36 students to the course over one semester, so the course is just one semester. Uh, and the course participants consist of people from a broad variations of fields and backgrounds who are located all over Sweden and also the world. Uh, the course is, uh, of course, in Swedish, so they have to understand or speak Swedish, uh, but there's no limitations in uh, where they can, uh, where they are located. Um, and uh, you can attend the course with the most basic smartphone camera and the computer with some kind of editing software. And we use digital learning platforms and video conference tool of, of the course. Uh, and the course consists of 10 modules based on flipped classroom that each span two weeks. And for the course and the structure, we use something called modules. Uh, and that structure is uh, in three steps, you can say. And the first step is preparation. So the students take part of a pre-recorded video lecture that we have recorded before on the topic and the concepts of the assignment. And the students also have access to other resources uh, meant to aid the self-studies, self self-studies like film references, texts and uh, technical tutorials. And then they have the execution part. Uh, the students work with a practical film assignment based on concepts and certain limitations that are introduced in each model. And that is also what's uh, introduced, introduced in the pre-recorded video lecture. And then each student have a prox one and a half weeks to plan, record and edit the assignment before uploading the results in Canvas. And Canvas is the digital learning platform that we use here at the Gothenburg University. And the third step is reflection. So we use online seminars with feedback sessions on each student's resulting work. After execution phase, the students have two days to watch and prepare feedback on each one's work. One student gives feedback on one other student's work in the online seminar with the help from our feedback model. And we use the feedback model uh, I guess uh, most of you use some kind of feedback or critique model and we have this one which is based on uh, four questions and this can change uh, a bit over the over the course as well uh, but this uh, feedback model helps because we have a broad variation of uh, of uh, students uh, and 
who were on some different levels of experience, uh, um, uh, this helps them to kind of give relevant feedback, even if you're not um, feel comfortable uh, with uh, analyzing other work. Um, and uh, one thing that we actually achieved, uh, since this is a distance course, and I know more distance course that it's uh, quite difficult to uh, have high attendance over the course, and we actually managed that. Uh, and I think um, one of the key points for that is that uh, to attend the seminar, you have to up upload your work two days before the seminar take place, and we have no acceptation. So if you don't, if you haven't uploaded the work, then you can't. Uh, uh, can't um, attend the seminar. Uh, and uh, most of the students are eager to get feedback on their work. And because they're receiving feedback, they also feel very obligated to pre prepare relevant feedback on others' work. So you don't want to show up unprepared. Uh, and the star, uh, students also have uh, the feedback model to rely on, which makes it easy to prepare relevant feedback. And lastly, all modules, including uh, seminars and practical work are examined continuously, which means that if you do not attend, participate and deliver film material based on introduced concepts, you will not pass the course. Uh, we, we also believe that the students actually I think it's quite fun to attend. The, and also the clearly defined uh, structure of the course results in very few questions from the students. They know what to do and when to do it. So um, even though we do not meet in the corridors or in the classroom, it's very rare that we actually uh, have questions between the meetings from the students. They can just look uh, everything up in uh, the digital platform and follow the um, recorded um, lecture and uh, take part of the other work and, and uh, then do the assignment and upload it in, uh, in Canvas. The fact that the course is easy navigated makes the structure itself doesn't get in the way of the learning process. So they can concentrate on what they should do instead of uh, um, trying to figure out what to do. Then a clearly defined aim for the course and the students facilitates and focus the discussions and the practical work. Then we have Canvas. Uh, I guess few of you use Canvas as a digital learning platform, but I just want to sh show you how, how we are using it in, um, in this course. So uh, this is uh, unfortunately in Swedish, but I guess that you can understand some of it anyhow. So we have these modules and it's nine modules over the course and we have named them uh, from the seminars that are uh, based around. So we have seminar one, two, three, four, etc., And it's in, the, it's in the chronological order, so it's easy to follow. Um, and um, we also based it around different themes and concepts. So we start out with observation and, uh, and documenting, and then we, the next part or phase is uh, staging, and we have an essay, film, and rhythm, and so on. And uh, if you take a look at one module, which is the span of two weeks, we have the introduction, which is the video lecture, and that can be about 30, 40 minutes uh, lecture about the theme and the concept. So the student take part of this first, and uh, we also have some film examples that it's connected to the lecture. And also some, it is in this case, uh, 
a couple of master classes and also some uh, tutorials about some uh, film technique. And uh, after that, they um, do the assignment, which is um, normally like a three minute film exercise of some kind um, that is based on the concept of the, uh, this module. And uh, two days before the actual uh, online seminar, they upload the video uh, or the final result here in, um, in Canvas and prepare feedback on each other's work. And uh, we have six groups, we have six students in every group. And uh, here you can see the uploaded films or assignments. And the matrix of preparing feedback is that the first uploaded uh, film from the students prepare feedback on the next student and the next student prepare feedback on the next student. So we, so we as teachers do never have to like uh, tell anyone who is preparing feedback on who because um, this material is kind of sorting that uh, thing out. Uh, and uh, then they have the feedback model to, uh, to prepare uh, feedback. And then we meet in the online seminar. And on, in the online seminar, we do not watch each other's movies because we already have done that. So we can focus totally on uh, the feedback and discussions about everybody's work. So I hand over to Luke Carl to for the aim and method and structure. Yes, uh, thank you, Tommy. Uh, so yeah, the, um, just really briefly want to go through uh, the uh, expressed uh, aim, method, and structures from our teachers, um, us teachers. Uh, how do we want <laughs> the course to be for the students? And uh, the aim is that we want to prompt the students to find and develop their own interests uh, and uh, the methods best suited to communicate it. Uh, that's what we want uh, them to become. Um, an emphasis lays on the feedback in the group seminars and the practical work the student does in between the meetings. So it's like a two stage uh, rockets of um, uh, practical work and the reflection on the practical work. Um, and uh, so the seminars are not only time for uh, presentations, uh, but it's also places for learning support uh, from both peers and teachers. So we don't uh, see uh, the teachers have a, uh, hi um, a higher hierarchy than the uh, students, but it's um, a conversation, a discussion. Yes, thanks, Tommy. Uh, and we based uh, the whole thing on a few pedagogical principles. Um, we believe that learning happens through the practical work uh, and the reflections on the practical work. So the practical work is uh, key. And the framework, and with framework, we uh, we mean um, what is um, the thing that makes it clear for the students what to produce is, uh, of course, the assignments, but it's also very much controlled by the aim or the the expressed aim of the student themselves. Uh, and we discuss the resulting work, uh, not the ideas and. Uh, not specific ideas, uh, the resulting work or the primary focus that we speak uh, about in the group seminars. Uh, so this means that we are theorizing through the students' film material and not ready-made uh, theorized filmic film theories. So uh, the, we believe that the theoretical knowledge are a tool for the process and not a goal in itself. So everything is based like in, for the, in, um, on the first point uh, about uh, on the students' uh, practical work. That's the key. So, <clears throat> and, um, and this is something that we think is very fun and uh, important. It's, uh, it's not uh, dependent on our um, knowledge and film practice. So in the course, like Tommy said, it's both people that's made a future film and people that's never touched a camera in the same group. 
and that renders really interesting discussions, uh, I, I think. Yes, so here is also, also a really short summary of uh, the whole uh, presentation. <clears throat> we believe that um, uh, a key to what we have been speaking about, about when uh, translating uh, um, uh, practical uh, work to uh, distance learning is to have a clearly defined uh, framework and structure because it facilitates and focus uh, the creative process. Uh, we believe another key is the learning through self-practice uh, creates uh, st uh, strong uh, students after the course or self-sufficient students after the course. Uh, the knowledge production is centered around the students' own discoveries. So it's, it's a research-based uh, uh, practice. Um, and you can attend wherever you're based and with the most basic access to equipment. Uh, and uh, we also put a uh, strong emphasis on the process of learning. How do you uh, reach or how do you gain new knowledge that you feel that you, that, that you feel necessary for your practice? What do you need as a student and how do you uh, access? that kind of knowledge and uh, and then you need to go and do it yourself because it's a self-practice course uh, but how do you access it and how do you do you handle the process doing it um yeah and we studied the, the students own practical work instead of trying to practice uh predefined theory like we said before and do you want to add something uh, tommy I think we got it. Thank you, Carl. Yeah, and, and we get, I, I, I see we have a, just a stu, uh, question here from a lot of people. Should we take them now or? Uh... Yes, I think, I think, uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much, mm. Carl, Tommy, and Tom, for very, very interesting uh, presentations. I thought, actually, um, Carl, in answer to your question, my first question is the first question in the chat. Why, why did you decide to do, to make this course in the first place, pre the pandemic? I think Th Tom is the really the right the person to uh, uh, answer that question because he, he is the, the, the one that's been working on this course for a very long time. I'm, I'm pretty new in the game here. Yeah, that, that was uh, actually uh, some different, uh, um, um, reasons, but uh, one was to get more broad and um, uh, expanded uh, um, group of people to to admit uh, um, to the university and to reach out to a bigger group um, um, and. I guess I answered two questions in here because uh, someone asked if it's first year students. No, this, this is actually a freestanding course. So it's an own course by itself. And um, um, we wanted to have a distance course, freestanding course uh, uh, for that reason to get more broader group of people um, who could E more easily try out to uh, to study on the artistic uh, school. Uh, so even though it's uh, meant to be introduction course, we have, as we talked about before, a very broad level of experienced students. We have, we have everything from first beginners to to uh, students who have made um, made um, feature films. But we also have uh, like students who are uh, practicing medicine and architects and psychology and and, and um, uh, yeah, so it's quite broad. Uh, next uh, question was uh, uh, how well, much time did you spend? Uh, sorry, did you? Want yeah, to? no, that's that's okay. Please go ahead. 
I, I have a, I have a question for, for, for all of you, but please go ahead if there's one there that you would like to answer. Yeah, it, it, yeah it, this, of course, took a while to set up, uh, preparation time to set up this canvas layout uh, and all the material for it uh, definitely took, took quite a while to do. But uh, on the other hand, um, we saved that time <laughs> when we start the course because then we don't have to do it all the time. So, so uh, even though it takes some time to prepare, um, we will uh, earn that later on. Um, yeah. There's, there's quite a few questions about the sort of practicalities and the technicalities behind setting up a big course like this, which we could get to in a minute. But there's one question that I'd like to ask uh, all, all of you, um, which is about, you're all talking about students who never meet in real life. But at the same time, there's very positive feedback here. And in the case of the Varland course, you, this is a tried and tested format which, which brings students in every year. I'm just interested in, if you could say a little bit about um, team building, is that an element? Obviously for you, Tom, in your shorter projects, that's obviously a, a very important thing you chose to let your students uh, form their own uh, groups, for example. Um, just, just wondering whether you could say a little bit about the, the, whole, the whole element of community in these, in these courses um, and how you, how you deal with it. Of course, a lot, of, a lot is to do with feedback models as well, but, but just these are groups of students, their classes. Can you say a little bit about that? Maybe you should start, Tom. Yeah, I mean, probably uh, I, we have never met these students as well. These are all students from participating uh, art schools in, in all over Southeast Asia and London. And what I what I found out is, um, of course, you can do, with, we, we did things like digital beer. Some of the students were kind of amazed what that is. So, so at the end of the first week, we just all got a drink. And at the end of the course, we, we, we celebrated together. Um, but I'm, I'm a strong believer that in order to, to break the ice, you need to take the, the courage in your hand and show something personal. And we were very lucky that, that uh, the flash fictions worked, but it, the students were super nervous. And there's also, I got, I got a private question, what did we tell them to do? So we just told them 120 words and you can use what, whatever medium you like and go to a place that has a meaning for you and that matters. Would you like to add something, Tommy and Carl, to that? About community spirit and, and uh, belonging, I suppose. No, it's just that I, I in, in, the, in the first class, I think it's extremely important to just get the the, the atmosphere up in the group and, and I take great responsibility in, in, in making a conversation happen um, because my aim is for everything to be self-sufficient after a few times and, and it becomes and, and, and to not fear the, the silence, the Zoom silence in the beginning. <laughs> so sometimes I, I, I clearly specify that, that they, someone should speak. I didn't, don't point out who and then I just stay silent. Um, and after a while, uh, when people know that, people start to speak in the mouth of each other, and so, which I think is a good thing, uh, especially in Zoom, as we all know, it can be difficult to activate <laughs> people sometimes. But I also really I agree with Tom, uh, Tom's uh, idea there with the courage thing. I, I like that uh, uh, to, to bring something where, where you need to do something that extra for the students, um, because I, I think it creates um, uh, glue, <laughs> binding uh, uh, relation. I mean, normally the, the glue and the binding happens when the students go for a coffee. And I was also co-teaching uh, with Caitlin Shepard from UAL, a teacher whom I've never met in real life. And we, we sort of bonded in, in preparation. We had our own WhatsApp group with another teacher from Zurich. And at some point, 
we started to post the food that we cooked or what we did on a on a Sunday afternoon. And this kind of also helped us to get closer closer. It was totally non-academic. But yeah. there are all these soft factors. And also the second video I showed you, Marta, there was an error. She was on the street in the south of Italy. The internet broke down. But these problems actually glued us together because we're all in, in the same shoes. So it's yeah, so sometimes I mean, between the lines, right? Yeah, exactly. Because that's, I think, what, what um, this Zoom situation really taken away. And it's the in informality of all meetings. Like what you say to each other out in the corridor when you walk to take a coffee or anything. Because everything is like the, the official. Like now we sit here when we speak officially <laughs> uh, all the time. So yeah, I think it's good to think about that. I think I think that's I think that's a really interesting point, uh, and it brings me uh, over to something that I'm interested in, uh, not just in your two projects, but also other people have sort of touched on it today. We are dealing with a generation who grew up on social media. They grew up with creating images, stories about themselves online, in frames, on screens, etc. cetera. We're, we're introducing um, interfaces and platforms that are much clunkier than what they're used to, okay? Um, <laughs> you, when, you, when, you, when you spoke about the Petra Kusha uh, project, you know, I could really sort of somehow relate to that. But it's interesting when you're when you're talking about introducing full body movement. At least we're sort of getting closer to, to something that they used to before. Someone else talked about in an earlier session. Talked about how how inviting the class into your private space reveals something about you that might be contradictory to your social media persona. I mean, there's some very interesting sort of areas here with this generation and with clashes between different generations as well. I don't know whether you want to say something about this. Any of you, maybe Tom, maybe Tom starts actually. You might have been thinking about this. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've, I, I haven't known this canvas, but we have our own tools. Uh, Zurich University is developing tools and and there's a, there's a certainly a clunkiness when we develop a tool because we can't do it as good. I, I started to use Miro boards. Do you know this? It's like a digital wallpaper. Um, I mean, we actually, I shouldn't say that out loud, but the WhatsApp group was probably the most important tool that we have. And we technically were not even allowed to use it because it, it it's exactly what I said earlier. It comes from the from the private experience. Your work is done. You hang around the phone, and if you if you can incorporate that, that might help. I don't know. Um, I suppose in the Valon course, you've got uh, students of very varying background and experience level, and maybe also very different ages. Is yeah. That right. Mm. But the the first first meeting we actually start with like a technical rehearsal so we have uh, 10 minutes each uh, for each student and um, and uh, then we try out the canvas the digital platform and also that zoom works and that they can upload um, uh, clips and pictures in canvas so uh, when we start uh, the course there's no uh, questions about how to use all the um, equipment or the digital um, resources uh, if that was the question mm. yeah I'm, I'm yeah that's uh, i i suppose actually just looking at the chat there are a few questions about canvas as a platform as well and you might say something about learning platforms if you like because these i suppose for all three of you that a, a solid learning platform is very, very important. And I suppose with, with, with the, with the uh, uh, longer course that you're talking about, you have experienced, you, you've, you've used Canvas for a long time, obviously, and you've found a way of, of making that a solid meeting point for the students, I suppose. Mm. Yeah, but also if you if you don't meet the students and can't talk to them in the corridor, say okay, we meet in ten minutes and so on, and uh, you can find this 
whatever you're looking for, uh, then you totally rely, rely totally on having a good digital platform where it's easy to, for the students to access everything that they need. So, um, so I, I can't see that we could manage to do this course without having this kind of digital platform. Then it could be whatever, it hasn't, hasn't uh, don't have to be, Canvas could be whatever, but some, some kind of solid platform, of course. Hmm. Um, I'm interested to know um, what your next step is. Obviously, in Varland, you've done this course for maybe a number of years. Did it change over the past term, over the past semester? Um, are there any specific elements that you would really strongly recommend can you give each other a little bit of advice? I mean, we're talking about mm -hmm. small instant projects versus really long, much longer projects. Um, what's, what's your next step, all of you? Like the next step is actually pretty big for us because it's, we try to make it uh, public, the whole course. Not the whole course, but uh, a specific um, part in it then we maybe want to make it public the whole course like to show you because now with corona everything i think we have like 500 applicants uh so we and since it's created like thomas said in an atmosphere of accessibility we we were thinking to make it um public but uh, it creates other problems of course because um what, what do you mean by public like yeah, it's access, uh, accessible without registration so you can take it uh, like like uh, this um Coursera course, or uh, uh, so you can sign up and you can go do the whole course without um, getting any actual points from it, but you can get all the material from it. Very interesting. There's a question here about number of teachers. How many teachers have you got on the course? We have do you, and what sort of technical support do you have? We have three <laughs> teachers. It's uh, uh, Carl. Uh, me and uh, Linda Sterner is also uh, yeah she's and, here somewhere there she is. <laughs> Do you want to add something, Linda? No, oh, it's just that it's really a fun course to teach in. Uh, it's, a, it's it's as Tommy and Carl says that it's a really high attendance and people are super super at attending. All <laughs> both in delivering and also in the classroom so it's, it's really yeah they do everything which is pretty amazing <laughs> for me uh, but but in a percentage point of view it's not a full-time teaching so even though it's we are free teachers we only have like 20 percent each teaching this course so um, it doesn't take up all our time to mm -hmm. But can I just can I just ask a practical question about uh, if you now do go go public with this course, how will it change? How will it change your input, and how will it change the sort of organization of it? Yeah, like that. That's what. Sorry, Tommy. <laughs> yeah, but uh, we don't want to kill this course because it's a popular course. We have like uh, five to six hundred uh, people admitting to the course every semester, so. Uh, of course, we don't want to to uh, uh, terminate that. Uh, um, but uh, uh, we are thinking to like give uh, like a part of the course, um, uh, do it public. But the the thing that they miss out is the online seminars that we don't yeah. give. We, we, uh, which yeah. is like like we said the most important part in in our eyes. So we're still in that we're still thinking actually about how like what part we should translate uh, uh, and and how we should do it because we don't know at, at this moment. It's a it's a process now. So so we really really don't know. Um, mm. And 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 like like we, we, uh, I said, I'm also really interested in like. The, the role of the teacher in this kind of teaching situations because in one way I want them to be almost the role should be zero <laughs> that would be like the ultimate teaching environment if you can create something like that but of course I don't believe that that is possible <laughs> in one way so so uh, uh, but uh, 
yeah, it, it's some of these aspects that we are yeah, discussing and, uh, and uh, thinking about at this moment. Mm, thank you. Tom, I'd like to bring you in. What, what, what's your next step? What, is your, what are your sort of conclusions or takeaway points after having experienced these shorter, more sort of instant formats, bringing big groups of international students together? So what we did, because this is an ongoing initiative, it's, it's called Shared Campus. A lot of universities are already part of this, more will come. So the summer school is gonna happen again. And we did an evaluation and UIL, Central St. Martins did also an evaluation. So a lot of the students have been asked for a long time. So we knew what we, what we did well and what we did wrong. Now it turns out that uh, University of London and ZLK wants to have more students in our course. And at the moment we are thinking about doing the course digital next year as well, even if COVID is gone because of CO2 uh, thoughts, because we don't just want to ship, uh, fly people around for three weeks from Hong Kong to London. That's just not, it, it can't be sustainable. Um, so we took this problem and now we are actually making it, making it the core of this course. We will make the course longer. We will accept more students and it will be the third iteration of our course. We will hack another pop icon. This year it was Greater Thunberg. Let's see what they choose next year, but it will probably continue digitally. This is so interesting. I think we've heard several things today that, that are really seeds for projects that we can do in future, regardless of pandemic situations or not. Great, really wonderful to hear your experiences. I just want to draw your attention to the chat. There's conversations going on there, there's questions to answer. So please um, keep it live and also um, have a look at the Google Docs um, document there where you can all add um, information and um, thoughts and feedback. Great, thank you very much, Tom, Tommy and Carl. And we're gonna take a short break and then we're going to meet Guido who's going to lead the, the final session today. Mm -hmm. Thank you all very much. Goodbye. Yes. Thank you. Thank you.